Uh, good evening and welcome to SOG TV's news for Saturday, June 25th, 2016. I am Rochelle Boutique. Don't wreck your carnival. This is the advice given by Managing Director of JARIC SVG, Eric Kipp, as Metro Saint General Insurance, in collaboration with the RSVG Police Force, held a launch of the carnival promotion yesterday, which focuses on road safety. Speaking at the launch at the Massey Store Car Park at Arnosville, Kipp stated uh, that his company seeks to save lives and encourage persons to engage in safe road practices. Eric St. Vincent, as Chanel said earlier, what we're here to do, we are here to build awareness. What we're doing this afternoon, this is an awareness session. What we are doing is pleading with you. We are giving you the perfect examples of what happened when you take that last drink, when you make that phone call, when you send that text. This is what happens. So today, what we are doing is urging you to don't wreck your carnival. Drink responsibly. Drive responsibly. Have a designated driver. Take responsibility for your actions. At the end of the day, what we want to do is save lives in St. Vincent and the Grenadine. Also speaking at the launch of the 2016 Carnival promotion was General Manager of Metro Saint General Insurance, Paul Seeley, who stated that his company is pleased to be a part of the initiative. Seeley also made calls for the strengthening of legislation to adequately uh, deal with reckless drivers and protect other road users. Now, I believe that too many times we are encountering situations where the accidents not only have increased our costs from a company perspective, but what we want to see for the future is a stronger legislation in place to deal with some of the, uh, um, for want of a better word, those culprits on the road who take no consideration to the innocent bystanders and innocent people who traverse our roads. Commission of Police Michael Charles, who also spoke at the event, said he is also honored to have a, an opportunity to work along with other stakeholders such as JAREC and Metro Saint General Insurance, an adventure which seeks to promote road safety. However, he expresses disappointment that stakeholders such as the National Omnibus Association was not present. Uh, Commissioner Charles added that his organization is committed to the safety of all road, road users and is looking forward to the passing of legislation which will give the police force additional tools to carry out their duties. What I can say is that we, as Brother Steele stated earlier, that our hands are tied, but they won't be tied for too long because we are pressing forward with the, to the Ministry of National Security but the draft is already with the Attorney General to deal with uh, laws to deal with reckless driving, tint, loud music, breathalyzers, uh, and what have you. And these can only be made present when we have the input of everybody. I, in an earlier conversation with Mr. Taylor and Mr. Steele, and I advise them that they too also can have the input by writing to the Attorney General's office to have their input in and that we can make this thing happen. The attitude, approaches and technology around corporate governance has dramatically changed. Hence, companies in the Caribbean simply cannot continue with business as usual. That's the advice coming from Chairman of KPMG for CARICOM, Carol Nichols, at a financial symposium held yesterday by the Chamber of Industry and Commerce, highlighting that the success of an economy is linked to the success of the business operating in the economy. And Nichols outlined that corporate governance is therefore critical and should be a key line of defense for companies, boards, or executives. In today's business environment, it is critical that we as business leaders, government, and regulators work together to improve trust between companies, regulators, and customers. But over the past few years, the topic has moved front and center, particularly in the Caribbean. 
In part, it is because regulators also recognize the value and risk mitigation benefits of corporate governance. Regulators know that organizations with robust corporate governance are more stable, more transparent, and more successful. That is why regulators has, have increasingly started to sharpen their focus on ensuring that companies within their jurisdictions maintain strong corporate governance systems and controls. Nichols pointed out that work needs to be done to improve corporate governance in order to balance the expectations of shareholders with the strategic direction of the company. She said that this would only happen if a company adapts new technologies, new attitudes and new approaches. Increasingly, regulators are focused on implementing early warning systems that allow them to initiate corrective action or to pivot their strategic direction. Regulators are increasingly expecting boards and executives to know what is going on within the four walls of their organization. And they're starting to hold them personally responsible for oversights or bad decisions that are made on their watch. What is clear is that globally, the attitude cor towards corporate governance and corporate citizenship is rapidly changing. Simply put, Corporate governance is moving from a reactive approach to a proactive approach. Noting that there has to be a greater involvement in order to achieve success, Nichols said, as corporate governance changes, there must be other changes in an organization. The problem is that in many cases, the capabilities, attitudes, and perceptions of the board are not changing as quickly as the external environment requires them to change. Continuing professional education must be encouraged and evidence. Board members must be rigorously selected and engaged. The role of the audit committee must be better defined and communicated. Board members must start to take more active involvement in the business and the setting of strategy. And in essence, the right skills and experience should be represented at the table in order to have the capability to critically assess situations and to offer advice. In other news, Randall Brown, a 17-year-old student, will spend the next five years behind bars on four gun and ammunition-related charges. The sentence was handed down yesterday at the Serious Offences Court when Brown appeared and pleaded guilty, guilty sorry, to the offences of having in his possession 1.30 three rifle and 13 rungs of 9 millimeter ammunition and one rung of 12 gauge. He was also charged for discharging a loaded firearm at Barley on June 22, 2016. Delivering the facts of the case, court prosecutor Constable Showett told the court that on the date in question, police at Barley armed themselves with a search warrant and went to the home of Brown and having conducted a search, the rifle and ammunition were discovered in his bedroom. On the same day, Brown is said to have armed himself with a locally made handgun and discharged it in an area next to the educational institution, resulting in his arrest. When asked by Chief Magistrate what sentence he would recommend, Senior Prosecutor Adolphus Delplesch said that discharging a firearm next to an educational institution is gross disrespect and that the state cannot lose the war to gun. He also stated that almost every morning this country is awakened to the news of someone losing their life due to firearm and a strong clear message must be sent to the would-be offenders. In other news, Zamfri man Zangi Adams will on Dimash Grand Night Sunday, July 3rd, 2016, seek to defend his title against 10 Calypsonians who were selected from the semifinals of the National Calypso Competition last evening at Carnival City, Victoria Park. The finalists are... Fitzroy brother Ebony Joseph, Chanel Scorpion Williams, Chanel McKenzie, Kingsley Hero Roberts, uh, Kenneth Vibrating Skate Aline, uh, Glenroy Sule Caesar, Robert Patrice King, Wendell Shippey Godrich, Prima Donna Bascom, and Roland Chicobi Vera. Vincentians are being urged to go out and support all 11 Calypsonians as they vie for the National Calypso Crown on Sunday, July 3rd, 2016.